Masters of the Ancient Sky. Confrontation. In the shadow of modern winged birds, whose images fascinate us with their beauty and grace in flight, lurks one of the most majestic and mysterious groups of creatures ever to conquer the skies. Pterosaurs. Having left the Earth millions of years ago, these flying reptiles became the first rulers of the skies, impressive in their power and majesty. Evolution has given rise to a variety of species of pterosaurs, from small ones like birds to gigantic creatures that rival the size of modern airplanes. Their wings, made of thin membranes, were adapted to the most complex maneuvers in the air, allowing them to hunt prey and glide over the expanses of ancient seas and forests. Some of these powerful pterosaurs, whose size amazes to this day, were able to cover distances comparable to half the globe in one flight. Their power over the heavens extended over 150 million years, leaving their mark on the history of our planet. When the Earth was just forming its continents, and the oceans were spreading widely, a group of mysterious creatures was born that conquered the skies. These were pterosaurs. Huge and small flying reptiles were undoubtedly masters of flight in their time. According to research, some members of this group, comparable in size to modern light aircraft, could cover enormous distances in the air. The wings of pterosaurs provided extraordinary maneuverability and speed, allowing them to conquer the vastness of ancient seas and land. Winged creatures ruled the skies for as much as 150 million years, leaving an indelible imprint on the history of evolution. In their glory, pterosaurs were not only rulers of the air, but also important participants in ecosystems, regulating animal populations and contributing to the balance of nature. Like almost every representative of the ancient fauna, Pterosaurs had rivals with whom they had to wage fierce clashes for resources, territory, and females. Entire events can be read from the remains of prehistoric representatives. For example, at the beginning of the Jurassic period, one small pterosaur named Rampharynchus was fishing near the shore. He had already eaten a couple, and pounced on the third giant fish called Aspidorhynchus. But an unexpected situation occurred. Aspidorhynchus most likely attacked and accidentally closed its jaws on the wing of the Rampharynchus and did not let go, and the winged hunter was unable to cope with it due to the weight of the latter. As a result, both drowned and sank to the bottom of the sea. Tectonic resin has made eternal mummies out of tragic dead rivals that have been well preserved to this day. Now we know that Rampharynchus hunted fish, and at the same time they themselves became prey to large predatory fish. And such cases between Rampharynchus and Aspidorhynchus were not uncommon. The invisible enemy of pterosaurs. Let's look at modern birds. In addition to natural enemies, birds face invisible enemies. These are bird fleas. Small insects travel in a friendly troop throughout the bird's body and cause a lot of trouble. They are perfectly adapted to live in a house called a bird. 150 million years ago, different types of pterosaurs suffered no less from such restless neighbors. Small fleas called Sauropterus found their home on their wings. 
The fleas had long legs with sharp claws, which helped them stay on the wings of pterosaurs during flight. The most important calling of these invisible insects was to drink the blood of pterosaurs. When pterosaurs hovered tens of meters above the ground, the fleas did not experience discomfort and continued to drink blood. When the pterosaurs dived into the water for fish, the Sauropterus didn't care. These annoying creatures felt great underwater and continued their hellish ceremony. These little creatures were on guard both in the sky and under the water, causing great harm to their large pterosaur friends. Confrontation manifested itself almost everywhere. Quetzalcoatl, a giant pterosaur, at the sight of which all prehistoric animals immediately had urgent matters to attend to and had to urgently run away. With a wingspan of up to an impressive 12 meters, these pterosaurs, which lived some 70 million years ago, were the largest flying creatures in the history of the Earth. According to researchers, the diet consisted of carrion and small vertebrates. But their true skill was flying. Thanks to their superbly developed flight abilities, Quetzalcoatl were considered unsurpassed flyers over long distances and sustained flights. Like most birds and pterosaurs, Quetzalcoatl was driven by extreme curiosity and absolute arrogance. The Tyrannosaurus had just hunted and started eating. But then a giant impudent chicken named Quetzalcoatl arrived. And no matter what, the bird tried to take possession of the prey. The Tyrannosaurus, of course, could not tolerate this and drove the insolent one away. But two Quetzalcoatl is already a force and the Rex had to retreat in this unfair situation. Confrontation always exists. Dimorphodon. In the early Jurassic period, the Earth was home to amazing creatures, among which the mysterious pterosaurs called Dimorphodon stood out. What makes them special? These ancient creatures had a unique feature. They had two types of teeth, more similar to the characteristics of mammals than reptiles. This phenomenon is of interest to scientists because pterosaurs typically had teeth of one type designed for a specific type of food. But Dimorphodon sheds light on the diversity and adaptive capabilities of the ancient animal world. These flying reptiles lived in flocks, and if some predator tried to attack them, they instantly received repulses and injuries that were sometimes incompatible with life. It was the collective lifestyle that ensured the safety of this species. But these creatures could not be called soft and fluffy. Dimorphodon were aggressive, arrogant, and fearless omnivores as shown in the Jurassic World films. Nyctosaurs Living approximately 85 million years ago, these pterosaurs were not large, but they were impressive with their antler-like cranial crests. Nyctosaurs stood out for their unique features. These pterosaurs lost digits on their upper limbs during evolution. The loss of fingers made their movement on the ground difficult. Researchers suggest that it was because of this that nyctosaurs spent most of their lives in the air. Almost always in flight. These mysterious creatures only rarely landed on the ground. These pterosaurs had few opponents. Some underwater predator was sure to take advantage of the moment when Nyctosaurus flew too low over the water. Larger pterosaurs usually did not pay attention to their smaller counterparts, preferring dead animals. 
But of course there were exceptions to the rules. Pteranodons. It is believed that more specimens of pteranodon have been discovered than any other pterosaur, giving scientists the unique opportunity to show the world this flying creature as it really was. These powerful creatures stood out among their pterosaur relatives for their size and anatomical structure. As for their diet, it was based on fish and small crustaceans, which pteranodons caught on the fly from the ocean. The long, toothless beak of the pteranodon served as an excellent tool for catching prey in the air. Pteranodon could attack both pterosaurs of other species and its fellow tribesmen in the event that it was necessary to take away prey or fight off the female it liked. The ancient world impresses with its mysterious inhabitants, among which the Lacedromius stands out. These creatures inhabited our planet approximately 110 million years ago. The Lacedromius attracts attention with its huge crest on its head, which occupied an incredible 75% of the surface of the skull. The size of the Lacedromius was impressive. The skull reached about 1.5 meters in length, and the wingspan was approximately 4.5 meters. But despite their impressive size, they preferred the earth rather than the sky. This is confirmed by their proportionally powerful paws and jaws, indicating that they were rather terrestrial dot real predators. And of course, these pterosaurs could have clashes with both mammals and dinosaurs. The Lacedromius could be excellent fighters and engage in ground combat with most predators. In case of danger, these feathered creatures could take wings and fly away. In ancient times, on our planet, Tenochasmas occupied their unique place among the inhabitants of the sky and water. They lived about 140 million years ago and were distinguished by their special teeth long, thin and very densely spaced, similar to a brush. Scientists believe that these unique teeth help Tenochasmas filter water when searching for food. Water passed through the teeth, and small invertebrates lingered in the pterosaur's mouth and became its prey. It was a true evolutionary engineering masterpiece that helped Tenochasm survive and thrive in their ancient world. But these small pterosaurs often became prey to marine predators themselves. The gaping pterosaur could have been grabbed by a shark. Ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs often fed on them. Jungaripter. This pterosaur can hardly be called a predator. Scientists studied the complete and well-preserved skeleton of the flying creature and found that the pterosaur ate shellfish. This is evidenced by the straight and blunt teeth that were needed to pull the mollusk out of the shell. Therefore, Jungaripter itself most likely was prey for all types of predators. The vast majority of pterosaurs were carnivores, eating mainly fish. Later and smaller flying reptiles most likely also hunted insects. Pterosaurs cannot be called 100% predators. Most of them were inclined to eat carrion. Even the giant pterosaurs preferred the meat of dead animals rather than hunting. By the way, in terms of their flight style, most pterosaurs resemble large gulls and albatrosses. Scientists suggest that even the smallest pterosaurs could not flap their wings like sparrows or tits. These creatures glided in the sky like hang gliders and only when in danger or searching for prey could they flap their wings vigorously and frequently. 
Due to the fact that part of the brain was developed in many types of pterosaurs, it is generally accepted that these creatures had more developed intelligence than terrestrial animals. These monsters had perfect orientation in space and at altitude. Pelican pterosaur or Acrandraco avatar Acrandraco was named after the flying creatures from Avatar. The reptile lived in the late Cretaceous period in the territory of modern China. This amazing specimen fed on fish and stored food in its throat pouch. Of course this pterosaur risked its life when it hunted. Inattention could play a cruel joke on the Crandraco in the form of a hidden plesiosaur or a hungry sarcosuchus. Pterosaurs lived in flocks. Habitat hung from a family of flying creatures. They settled on sea coasts, cliffs, in valleys remote from the sea, near rivers and lakes. Pterosaurs made for life. Flying lizards laid eggs in pre-prepared nests. They built nests on high rocks, cliffs, and trees. Pterosaurs looked after their offspring until the young began to feed and fly independently. To prevent the eggs from drying out and getting cold, the female covered the clutch with grass and leaves and incubated it until the cubs hatched. While the female was incubating the eggs, the male was busy getting food. Archaeopteryx In terms of skeletal structure, Archaeopteryx is similar to modern species of birds, as well as to the skeletons of the fossil remains of Deinonychus, which belonged to theropod dinosaurs. Deinonychus, in turn, are considered the closest relatives of birds. Experts believe that an animal such as Archaeopteryx could fly, or at least be able to glide well. In all likelihood, thanks to its relatively long limbs, Archaeopteryx could run for a long time and quickly along the ground until it was picked up by rising air currents. Having tenacious claws on their wings, they could easily climb tall trees and then end up in the air, gliding over considerable distances. It is believed that most of the life of these ancient representatives of birds took place in the trees. If you pay attention to the structure of the teeth, they were not intended for grinding food of plant origin. But still, Archaeopteryx could feed not only on carrion and insects, but also on plants. Since Archaeopteryxes were not impressive in size, they had many natural enemies. Considering the fact that Archaeopteryx could fly, or at least glide, they were not easy prey for predators. Pterosaurs were amazing creatures, and in the near future, we will learn a lot about these interesting creatures. Thank you for watching this episode to the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also press the bell so you don't miss new and interesting videos from the Real Unreal channel.